this is Marcia from Evelina's Way. Would like to thank you for seeing my video today. Uh, my video is going to be about depression and how to identify the symptoms and how to help those who are struggling. Um, also, uh, just remember that yesterday's struggles are today's lessons. God bless you and thank you for watching the video. Good morning. This is Marcia from Evelina's Way. Um, I want to discuss uh, something that I live with every day since I was a teenager, and it is depression. I have, uh, I have depression. I uh, want to explain to those people who do not understand depression, uh, who don't have it, what exactly. Um, it is and how to identify it. It is very difficult for a person who does not have depression to understand depression. Depression, um, it, it's, it's a lot, lack of chemicals in the brain. And I've had it since I was like 16, 15, 16, 17 years old. And, and in those years, I, um, you know, people just said, "Well, you just get over it. You, um, oh, you can, you can beat this. You can, you know, you know, just, just fight through it. Just get through it." The problem with that is that if you don't have the chemical in your brain, or you have less chemical in your brain to do that, then how can you? Um, it's like driving your car and having no gasoline in it and then someone says oh just push that car you know that that car will go if you don't have the right oil and gasoline in your car it will not go if you do not have the correct chemicals or amount of chemicals in your brain you will not go um, for people who do not have depression it's it's hard to understand it, and I'm and including anxiety in in this as well. We um, it is is extremely hard. You never get past it. You learn to live with it. And I take medication. That is the gas for my emotional and my brain uh, for for the serotonin in my brain. When people say, well, just get over it. And I've had a lot of people judge me uh, because I'm not the same as everybody else. I also have sleep problems, which are very common when you have the serotonin problems uh, in your brain. It is very, very hard on the, on the person who has depression because... <laughs> I've heard it say, well, well, just get up and go, or um, you're lazy, or uh, just get up out of the bed. Come on, you can fight this, and you can get over this. But if you don't have the chemicals to do it, you can't do it. Uh, you can't make yourself have those chemicals. You, it's, it's, it's a stigma. And, you know, when I was a girl... If you mention the word depression, and we're talking like 1970s here, 80s, then then they thought, oh, mental institution. So, and I didn't even understand that I had it. Um, there are different kinds of depression, and there's two that I know of, and I'm sure there are more than this. But there's the 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 depression that's that you have that's genetic. That's what I have. My dad had it. His mother had it, and I think it went on back for generations before they understood exactly what it was. They called it melancholia. Oh, they're just being melancholy today. Or, um, oh, she's got a, you know, they, 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 women would just go to bed. Or men would be, uh, you know, they would consider themselves lazy. And, and in the reality, and I'm not saying that all people 
uh, that have depression are these things because they're not. But it affects us in such a way that it is extremely difficult to live with somebody with depression if you don't understand depression. Um, like I say, I take my medicine every single day. And if I don't take my medicine, my depression is, it, depression is not only sadness. It is like an empty place. And you can't seem to, to fill it enough to do enough things to make it okay. It is a um, miserable existence if people don't understand or try to understand what it is and how it affects you. Other kind of depression is situational depression where people have lost a loved one or have had a traumatic event in their life and they go through a dip in their brain chemistry and it changes and, and they can eventually recover that. Uh, talk counseling can help therapy, but if you don't have the chemicals in your brain, it's like a, a type 1 diabetic, which is usually called juvenile diabetes, when you're not born with the hormones that you need to make a proper amount of insulin and you tell that person just get over it you just make your body do it and your body cannot do it because it doesn't have it to do it can't make it um, and it is extremely hard for the person who's suffering from it there's usually a lot of stigma around it and a lot of um, addiction problems when people have uh, depression. I've been extremely blessed not to have uh, the addiction problems, but a lot of people do and they don't recognize them. Uh, some of my depression symptoms is I before I understood about medication when I was young, uh, in my 20s, and I was trying to raise my kids, and um, I didn't know what was wrong with me. I, I didn't know there was anything wrong with me, but there was. Uh, I would make crazy decisions, not based on evidence or thought, just swing out of control. And I had a temper, and I, it was like I just could not get hold of myself. And I couldn't. <laughs> I didn't have the chemicals to help me do that. So now I take medication daily for my sleep and for depression. I happily take it. I have tried many, many, many natural things. I've tried so many things to get off the medication. And when I do that, it is a wreck every time. Uh, and with me, with a sleep disorder, and you're not getting the a right amount of sleep, it, it, it just makes it worse. Uh, I, I get down, and it takes me days to get over it, even with my antidepressant. The antidepressant um, helps. It's not a cure. It's just filling in those those lacks in your brain, those lack of chemicals in your brain. So if you know somebody who has depression or anxiety, please understand that what they're going through, and if you don't go through it or you don't understand it, please don't tell them. Just push through it. Just get over it. Uh, you know, I've heard people say, pull up your, your big girl pants and just move on but if you don't have the chemicals to do it you can't do it um, I call depression silent suffering because people who suffer with especially the kind of depression that I have that is it is genetic and I know it's genetic even though it hasn't been diagnosed as genetic because I can I saw it in my dad I saw it in his mom 
and in generations back as far as I know, you could see those problems. Now, some of the things that can help um, with medication is I like to be out in my garden. I like peace. I like to be able to have some control over uh, what I'm doing. Now, I've noticed, and I'm not saying this is, I'm not a doctor, I'm, I'm just a person who deals with this, is that people with depression problems generally want things very simple. They don't want a lot of um, extra things, like for me, gardening and having control over my food and just the simplicity of life and nature helps me very much. Now, it's not my cure. <laughs> There's no cure for what I have. I manage it. And sometimes I don't, I'm not able to manage it as well as other times. And it's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's not any person's fault that has the kind of depression that is especially genetic. Um, now, situational depression, you know, so, some people can work through that, and it's hard to know the difference. The way I look at it, and like I say, I'm not a doctor, but the way I've observed with people that I know with depression is people who have genetic depression generally start in their teenage years. They generally have trouble with insomnia. They, they cannot make clear decisions. They avoid hard things because they're afraid of failure. Now, and, and generally, especially when I was growing up, you were, you were targeted, not because the people were mean, it's because people didn't understand, but you, you were a target because you couldn't hold up, um, and school was so challenging for me because, for one thing, I didn't sleep well, and, and I... I, I got distracted very easily and then of course my grades suffered and then I thought well I'm just dumb and none of those things being dumb is not true because in my adult years after I had controlled had some control over my depression I went to college when I was 56 years old and I graduated with an associate degree and I'd never walked in a graduation before I was 56 years old um, but it showed me that I was not dumb that I you know and, and as a teenager I had horrible acne and I felt like I was overweight and then when your peers are, are poking fun at you and your family members don't understand and they will say things like oh my goodness you're so big compared to other people that drives so much home that you carry for your life. Um, if you have suffered with this, don't be ashamed of it. It's not anything to be ashamed of. Understanding it helps. Get medi getting medication for it helps. It's essential. And people say, "Oh, you you just you know just get over it. Just grow up. You know, just move on." you can't you cannot when you have this situation um, I'm 58 years old now and most most of the time I have a pretty good grip on depression um, but when I see people suffer from depression or anxiety because even though they're not the same in my opinion just watching things they're linked so I watch my children and my grandchildren closely um, because mine's genetic. I can see it down through history. So I watch them closely and try to express um, my concern when I start seeing things. Uh, I just want people to know who don't understand it to please be compassionate. Try and put yourself in the situation where you cannot
control your emotions at 100%. Now, I'm not saying that bad behavior is correct behavior at all. But there is help for people who have that. And, and generally, a doctor, nowadays, doctors are trained for that. Um, talk therapy works. And um, I found a new talk therapy. I can't remember the name of it. But it, it's a, for people who have depression, they, it's like they have a hard time filing, putting their, like their memories in files. In other words, anything that's traumatic that happens that most people can just pull, put into your file and go on, people that suffer with depression, it just bounces around in their brain. Um, but there are ways that you can actually, that there are certain counselors out there that can actually help you to be able to access your file cabinet and put away, you know, the, the negative comments that happened to you, the hard things that have happened to you, the trauma that's happened to you, instead of letting it bounce in your brain. And of all the things that I've had that I've done next to my medication, is that has helped because it's helped control the chaos in my brain. And it's a, it's a, I wish I could remember exactly what it's called. I will get back to you on that. Please comment if you're struggling with this and I will try and get you as much information as possible. Um, sunshine helps and activity helps. There's times when I will get up and I'm, I'm just feeling blah um, and I will go run around the block. I'll walk the first part, run, then walk, then run and it just see, it oxygenates my system and it helps. It's not the cure. There's no cure. People need to understand there is no cure. This has been going on. Theodore Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt, had depression and anxiety and his brother had it as well. It ran through his family really thickly. Even one of his children committed suicide. And um, you don't get over it. You you live with it, you learn to live with it, you learn to cope with it, and being able to recognize the signs in yourself so that you, you are not so brutally hard on yourself, because I'm very hard on myself, but I realize what's connected to depression and what's not. And by learning that, you know, I'm 58, and it's taken me a lot of years to understand it and to accept it and not accept other people's judgment of it or of me because I'm different. Um, I'm a very creative person. I'm not a, you know, I'm just extremely creative and I love to create and to do things. But a lot of people who work from nine to five and they can do that every day and they have no problem doing it for years and years and years do not understand me they don't because when you you're under additional stress which is normal to other people normal uh, what we consider stressful and depression is it's just a normal thing for other people they don't even understand it is being depression uh, because it's not depression for them. They have what they need to process all these things. And it's not, it's not a fault. It's not laziness. It's not, um, it's not your fault. <laughs> but it is your fault if you don't reach out and get help. Um, there are ways to help now understanding what's going on is very important looking for the signs of it are very important and you're not going to do that by yourself uh, a lot of people just think that you can plow through but you cannot and this is this is the only problem that I have in my life these are the only things but it affects every single aspect of my life um, it's affected how I've earned money. It's affected how 
um, my marriages. It's affected my children because I would I when I was raising my children, I had it, and I didn't know what it was. I didn't know, you know. And and now we all understand it, and you know, and that helps. But if you just feel like you're out of control, or if you just want to stay in the bed all day, um, get help. <laughs> get help. There is help out there. Uh, talking to someone who has it, huge help. My husband um, does not have depression or any problems like that. He is extremely compassionate and he knows me and loves me regardless of if I'm just able to do <clears throat> what other pe people consider everyday with things. Uh, I've learned a lot. I've struggled a lot and it's made me a stronger individual. But that doesn't mean my depression goes away. It just means that I learn more about myself and my coping skills. You know, I feel like I, I have done amazing things considering someone who suffers like I have suffered with depression, which has been all my life. Um, I have more intense symptoms sometimes especially if my sleep gets off. If my sleep gets off or crazy or I'm not sleeping well, I, I will be in the bed, uh, even with my medication. So please don't be too hard on yourself and don't expect it to go away. It's something that you're gonna live with, but it can be managed. It can, you can manage to have a very full, good life, a life that you're proud of but it's going to take someone other than just you to do that. Th these are my opinions. These are my, um, these are things that have happened to me. And I, if I can help someone who has these, if I can just give them some hope or, or encouragement or just know that you're not struggling by yourself, I hope that that can help. It is a very brutal thing, especially when people do not understand and they just think you're lazy or you just think that, you know, you give up too easy or whatever, and it's none of those. It's none of those. Um, look in your past. Look back at your parents or your grandparents and see how they were. And addiction is not normal, by the way. It's not a normal thing. If you have addiction problems, look back because it could be genetic. And if your body craves certain things or you cope um, with depression or anxiety with addiction, it, 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 you're more prone to have it. You're more prone to, be, to have addiction problems if you have these two things because the chemicals aren't right in your brain. So talk to your doctor. Don't be afraid to take your medicine. I take Zoloft every day. Um, I have family members that take um, Lexapro, and then there's also Prozac. There's there's a lot there's help out there, and there's other things I'm sure now, but I found one that works for me, and it works for me every time, and I take it. And there was a time I thought, well, I, I'll just get over this. I'll just figure it out. I'll do the natural things. I'll do, and it's it it's it's a disaster. And then I've got to start over. Um, be aware of yourself. Don't judge yourself, but be aware. Monitor yourself uh, for those swings, those ups and downs. Those manic times when you're just like, ah, oh, you just, you know. And then the times when you're like down. They're not normal. You have a problem. You have a medical problem. And there are things to do to help that, to, to give you a life that can be managed. I'm not going to cure it. Not my kind. If you don't have the chemicals, you don't have the chemicals. There are things that help, 
my medicine helps me with those chemicals but if you don't have them you don't have them and in in my situation with my family going back you don't create them either um, so just take this for the love and the care that I intended um, there's so many things that when when I when people talk about other people they're like well this person has done this or they have addiction problems or they have this you know coming from a place with depression I look at things differently um, I have compassion for people who who are struggling because I struggle and I have struggled when I didn't understand what was going on with me so please if you're one of those who don't have depression please be kind please understand that in a lot of situations uh, it, they can't help it encourage them to go to the doctor to get help because there is help and they can watch my video and you can comment and if I can if I can steer you in any direction that can help you through this either the person that's dealing with it directly or the the people who are dealing with the person who's dealing with it uh, it can you can live a good healthy um, life with it you've just got to be more sensitive to yourself to what's going on with you and understand even the subtle changes and even with diet I've got to be really careful with my diet uh, it's just a lot of balancing um, so take this for, with the love I intended and understand that I care I care deeply for people and have compassion and have um, empathy and sympathy because I've been on both sides of that but if you all have gained anything from this, please like and subscribe. I am um, building my channel. But this, I woke up with this. I haven't slept well in the last two or three days, so I'm really starting to feel uh, my depression, even though I take my medicine. So I'm working on changing some things out. But I just beg you to be very kind to those who you don't understand, who suffer from these things. Um, pray for them. Pray that they can get help and answers and that they can come across somebody who, who understands them and can lead them in the right direction. You can't fix them. You can't fix these people. And if they're not willing to get the help that they need, there's just not a lot to be done. I mean, but there is help. So, God bless you. Uh, my faith gets me through these times when things aren't just right. Uh, but God also gave us a brain to use in cases like this when things, then we can't make these chemicals. God gave us people that can help us. And as Christians, we reach out to help, but we also have to um, accept help when it's given. And I get that from my, my medication. My doctor is very understanding. He knows me. He's been my doctor for 20 plus years. My husband understands me. My children um, understand me for the most part. Uh, so God bless you. Have a great day. And I will talk to you later. Please comment if there's any questions you have that I can help you with I would be happy to get you information uh, this is Marcia from Evelina's Way and remember that this is generational what I suffer from is generational from my daddy's side not from my mama's so like subscribe y'all have a blessed day love ya and thanks bye Thank you so much for watching Evelina's Way. Uh, if you're having any depression or anxiety problems, please seek help. God bless you.